Hey everyone, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick update. I'm outside for a quick walk and I wanted to give you an update on two books that I'm currently reading right now. Um, I'm doing one audiobook and one ebook and both I got from my library, which is awesome. So the first book that I'm gonna tell you about real quickly is my ebook and this one's called The Iron Duke by Mel Jean Brooke. And this book is actually part of a trilogy, I think. Maybe there's like a novella or two thrown in there as well, but they're each standalone novels, so you can read them alone or all together if you want. Um, but I don't think it follows like a serial story overall. But I'm reading the first one in the series. And this is a steampunk, kind of like romance, sci-fi slash mystery, murder mystery. So it's a really cool genre that I've never really read about before. And steampunk... Um, I didn't even really know what that genre was, but basically the story takes place about 200 years ago and it's sort of a parallel world where things worked out differently in terms of empire control. And in this particular story, there's this nation or empire called the Horde, which has taken over a lot of Africa and parts of Europe. And uh, they use these nanotech, nano agents or nanobugs that they have secretly implanted in people's food and they use that as a way to control them. So there's a huge tower that emits frequencies when they decide and um, it, it like suppresses people's emotions and makes them do different things. It makes them reproduce on demand like with whoever is around. It's, it's crazy. So anyway, before the story starts, there's this guy called the Iron Duke who was originally a pirate and a mercenary and one day he, for some reason, the nanotech or the nanobugs don't affect him in the same way. So normally people aren't able to get anywhere close to this tower because of the nanobugs in their body. But he's able to get close to it and he does this sort of like suicide mission and he destroys the tower. He survives and the, the whole of the UK just hails him as a hero and appoints him as a duke. So the story follows him as well as this woman named Mina, who is an investigator with the London police. And she's assigned to investigate a murder of this body that dropped from an airship onto the Iron Duke's house. Um, so they have to work together and they sort of try to put the pieces together to figure out what's going on, who this guy is. He, he ends up being connected to the Iron Duke's previous ship that he used to pirate around on, but he has since given up to the Navy. So he's personally invested. Um, Mina's little brother happens to be on that same ship training in the Navy. So they just go on this adventure um, to all these different places to try to solve this mystery and figure out how to save her brother and how he can get his ship back. Um, there's a romance that develops as well. Um, there's a lot of fun extra characters in the story that are, I'm really enjoying as well. There's Scarsdale and Yasmin, who's a female pirate who's really tough. And I just really like the writing so far. Um, it's really um, nicely written. The descriptions are amazing. You can picture everything. Um, the world building is fabulous. I think that if anything, that's probably the best part about this book. She just paints such a picture of this alternate world. And it's weird because even though it's set 200 years earlier, they have certain technology that's more advanced than we have now. But they also like don't have electricity. When Mina first sees electricity, she's like, wow. So it's really, it's a really interesting premise and a story. And I will have to say, I got about halfway through the book and I had to start it over because I started to get really confused about the plot and what was going on and who all the characters were. And I like forgot who this person was and forgot who that person was. So if, you've, if you ever decide to read this, I recommend keeping a little notebook to remember who everyone is. Cause I don't know, I had a little hard time with that. So that's been really fun to read. And then the second book that I'm reading is the audiobook called The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. And if you were following me on my other channel, you might know that I've been trying to read this book for a really long time. I originally took out the ebook. It's a really long book. It's about 600 pages, which is really long for a contemporary romance, which is what this is. And I just had a hard time getting into it at first. But once I started the audio, the audio narrator is fantastic. She's so, so good. I'm really enjoying her and her portrayal of the characters. She's doing such a great job. And the premise of this book, it's a single point of view, so we only get the female character's view. And her name is, is Vanessa, and she's in her mid-20s. And she's the assistant to this guy named Aiden Graves, who is a professional football player. 
in this like fake organization, but it's basically like the NFL. And he's originally from Canada, but he's, he's here on a visa playing for the United States. And she's his assistant. She does everything for him. She cooks, she does his photo shoots, she runs his social media, she manages his appointments, all this stuff. So we start out, she's, <laughs> we start out in the book and she's just really angry with him. He's a very stoic sort of like, no sense of humor, just really practical, doesn't say thank you, very unappreciative, kind of like a grump. Um, so that's kind of how he's painted at first. And something happens with his manager and Vanessa. His manager is a total jerk and he says something that sets Vanessa off and she's like, you know what, I'm done. I'm so done. I This job has been great. It's given me a lot of financial stability. Now I can like move on and do what I really wanna do. So she decides to quit. She kind of leaves. <clears throat> She kind of leaves on bad terms. She like gets all her anger out. And then a couple weeks later, Aiden shows up at her doorstep begging her to come back. Like, you know, he can't, he just wants her back so badly and he's really sorry and all this stuff. So she keeps refusing him. She's like, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I can't do that anymore. So then he comes back a little while later and he has a proposition for her, her. And he basically asks her to marry him so that he can stay in the United States because his visa ran out. And um, so he so he's going he decides to offer to pay off her student loans, which were like one hundred thousand dollars. And he said he'll buy her a house. So at first she's like, no way. You know, that's that's illegal. I that's I can't do that. That's awful. But as she thinks about it, she decides like, like you know what? Maybe I can do this. This is such a huge relief. Like she's so stressed out about her her financial situation that she ultimately finally decides that, yes, she can forgive him enough to be friends, to go through with this and, um, you know, keep her end of the bargain. So it's a marriage of convenience trope, which I really like. And it's, it's also like a friends to lovers trope, which I really like. And so far it's really good. It's really funny. Like I find myself laughing out loud a lot to what she says and how she's thinking. And she's such a likable heroine. She's, she's just really realistic. And everything that comes out of her mouth is like so relatable. And we start to peel the layers off of Aiden and we find like these tiny little sweet moments with him. And it just, it, there's not a huge amount of plot, but it's really sweet. And it just talks about how they they like slowly build their friendship and slowly build up trust. And all these little things keep happening and we see the sweet side of him and we just really get to know these characters. And I'm really, really enjoying it. It's not like a sappy romance, which I usually don't like to read. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll watch like Hallmark movies, Hallmark Christmas movies, like the entire month of December. But for books, I usually don't tend to love romances, but I am loving this one so much. So those are the two books that I wanted to let you guys know I'm reading. And um, yeah, the sun's starting to go down and I'm gonna just take a quick look. I wanna try to pick some um, white pine needles to make some tea. I love to do that this time of year to get the extra vitamin C, but yeah, I will check in with you guys later. Here. Okay guys, here's a quick chick update. Remember in my last vlog, if you watched it, these little chicks were just born. There's one of them. There's the other. <laughs> so in here, I just wanted to show you guys one last look at our real Christmas tree that we got this year. The star no longer works, unfortunately. I have to get a new star next year, but it's so beautiful and we're taking it down tomorrow and I always feel so sad to take our tree down. Um, I'll just like sit in here. I'll probably have a glass of eggnog <laughs> just to say goodbye. Maybe it's just the fact that we have such a long winter here in New York and the colorful lights and having this real tree inside, it really just brings me so much happiness and coziness. And when we have to put all the ornaments away and say goodbye for another year, it does really make me sad. But I do keep the other tree up for a while. So at least and we have this little pretty I love these old vintage porcelain trees I think I found this at a garage sale but yeah I just gotta you know put the lights somewhere else <laughs> and to make myself happy hey 
everyone. I'm sorry for the lighting. It's pretty late out. I'm getting ready to go to bed, but I just wanted to do a really quick reading update um, for you guys. It's a couple days after Christmas. I hope you guys all had a wonderful holiday for those who celebrate and we definitely did. It was a whirlwind as it always is, but I always feel like I can enjoy Christmas once it's over. <laughs> like I can sit and watch Christmas movies and I feel like I have more time in the evening. There's one of our little trees and it's just like mo way more relaxed. So that's the phase I'm in now. I've been trying to watch a few Christmas movies that I didn't have time for. Like I watched It's a Wonderful Life last night and A Christmas Story and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And of course I've got like a whole list of Hallmark movies to watch, but as far as reading, I am getting closer to finishing two books that I talked to you guys about already. The first one is called The Iron Duke by Mel Jean Brooks, and this is the one I'm reading. And um, it's really, it's pretty good. Like, it's definitely entertaining enough where I'm looking forward to picking it up. And um, the plot got a little slow there in the beginning, but it started to pick up a bit more. And I'm still like a little tiny bit confused about what's going on within the plot, to be totally honest. Like, anyway, the relationship that's developing is really nice. The um, steamy scenes are really, really well written. Um, they're very intense, though, not for the, not for people that don't like descriptive steamy scenes, I'll tell you that. But really well done. Um, the world build building that I think I mentioned before is really, really good. Like you, I feel like this is very cinematic. Like I can see this being adapted to a movie or a TV show, but definitely think I'll read more from this author when I'm done. So that's the Iron Duke. And I just, I love the vulnerability of the main character a lot. She's not perfect. And she has, um, some traumatic things happened to her in the past, which just she it makes her really likable and relatable and you really want her to do okay and to succeed. And the hero, our alpha male, he's very alpha, um, but he's really um, developed a sweeter side, which is really nice to see within the romance part of the book. But the overall steampunk genre, steampunk genre is really interesting and fun to read about. So it's, um, I've been enjoying that part of it. And then the other book is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, which is the audiobook I'm listening to. And this is a contemporary romance and it's really long. It's a 16 hour audiobook and it's like 600 pages if you read it. So I'm right, I have like an hour left and I can already tell that I really want to be able to devote that last hour to really paying attention to it and listening to it instead of just doing it, listening to it while I'm doing other things which is how I've read, listened to the majority of the book. But our main characters, Vanessa and Aiden, they, this is like one of the sweetest romance books I've ever read. It's also one of the longest, but it's really, really sweet. Like focuses a lot on the love and the intimacy um, of these people coming together. It's a marriage of, of convenience. And he's like, starts out as like grumpy and stoic and, she, they both have their own faults and they both have these sort of troubled pasts um, regarding their family life and their parents. And just so they really have been bonding a lot over that. They're opening up more to each other. It's just such a realistic romance. Like you can really feel the relationship coming together, which can be a little bit lacking in a lot of romance books that I've read in the past. So I am really enjoying this. This might be one of my favorite romance books. Um, that I read and I highly recommend it. I highly recommend the audio. I love the narrator. She does such an awesome job and the characters are just so likable and the way she writes their emotions and um, the descriptions of what's going on. It just, it like gives you all these like sweet, warm, fuzzy feelings. And I just, am really enjoying that. So I'll, I'll do a better wrap up once I'm done with the book, but yeah, I just wanted to update you guys. It's a couple more days left in December. And I um, hope you guys have a wonderful, happy new year. Goodbye to 2022. I don't know how your year was, but mine was definitely challenging. It's still a little challenging. Uh, but the second half of the year is really throwing me for a loop. But I hope you guys are doing well.
guys. Oh my goodness. I just wanted to pop on here. Um, I just finished listening to The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was one of those books where when you're done reading it, you're just like almost speechless. Like, I don't know. I just loved that book so much. Like that's definitely one of the probably like an all-time favorite ever book for me. Definitely probably one of my favorite if not my favorite contemporary romance I've ever read. Um it was just I don't know, it's like it felt like you really got to know these characters and that you were there with them and I could have listened to like hours and hours more of their story and what happens to them in the future and this this was one that had a little epilogue at the end so you kind of see how the relationship ended up and it just like I felt like it really closed everything so beautifully and nicely and this was such a slow burn romance and it was so focused on love and intimacy rather than the more like steamy sexual part and I think that's what I really liked about it it really like you really got to know the characters. I don't know. I'm I'm still like at a loss for words. So I'm gonna get my thoughts together better about this book so I can um, do it more justice in my monthly wrap up. But it is January first, so technically this is the first book I finished in 2023. And yeah, I just wanted to come on and document my like immediate reaction. I had tears in my eyes. I wiped them off. I don't want to cry on camera, but it was so good. Oh my goodness. And I finished it. I had like maybe 15 more minutes left before the loan was going to expire. So I'm really glad I was able to finish it. I just laid here doing nothing and listened to it. I loved it that much. So the wall of Winnipeg and me guys, I highly recommend it. If you want a cozy, but funny, realistic, heartwarming story. I loved it. I loved it. All right. I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs>